What's up guys and gals, welcome to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Stranded Deep, where I'm actually, it took me forever. Like, it was an exhausting experience trying to make it back to my own island. Like, I probably hit five or six islands, just kind of like swimming around. My first guess was right, I made it back to, I kind of knew how to chart my steps, and I, I think I have like a vague, instinctual directional sense, where like, I may not get to the right island, but eventually I always make it back to mine. Just based on the fact that we made it here. I got all the stuff back here, so I figure we'll stock it up and kind of like leave it around. I don't even know if you can do anything with the duct tape just yet. I mean, it seems like one of those things you can make a campfire out of our duct tape. That seems like a terrible idea. You've got like one of the, you got four rolls of one of the most useful materials mankind has ever invented. Bad, bad idea. I'd actually probably start using it to make some kind of rain catch on the side of our house. Like maybe I would take the duct tape and double layer it like you do when you make like a duct tape wallet. And I would make some kind of rain catch on the side of the house over on this side. Something that kind of like slanted downwards. Basically just like a sheet that would run from here to here. And would stick out just, it doesn't have to stick out that far. and would converge to a point. Sort of like a, I don't know, a slightly ellipsed plane I guess. A slightly bent plane. Almost like a, a half full tube basically running. Basically I'd make a gutter system off the house. Is what you're trying to do. I would make, I would make a gutter that dripped off over to here out of the duct tape. And it would collect into some kind of receptacle in the water. Like other places in the game you can find buckets and things like that. But for right now we haven't found it. We found a lot of stuff so far but we haven't found a bucket. Our medical supplies, I don't know. Maybe leave the medical supplies like right out in front of the house just in case we need it. Honestly I'm interested in building some more stuff in this episode. So that might be what we attempt to do first. I think that we found ourselves a good axe which is nice. I threw it into the side of my building. Great. Great, great, great. Here, just drop it right there. There. No! All, all of my great works have just been undone. You know how long it took me to stack that stuff up beside the building? A lot longer than I care to admit. A lot longer than I would care to admit. Our watch is beeping at us, meaning our health is low. I got dragged by a shark. That's the footage you saw at the beginning of this episode. It was horrifying. But... I guess the shark was just trying to help because he brought us back home. That's all that I can say about it. I think he was trying to help because we're home now. I mean, this bugged-ass coconut is still over here. I'm going to start putting the buggy coconuts over, like, here and just, like, dropping them on the side of the island. I think it's because if you save the game. So, here's my thesis as to what has happened inside the game. My hypothesis is that when the game saves, it saves all the items as a piece of the biome that they are currently in. But when you go back into the game, it does not release them from those biomes, which is why every time you get close to the border of an island, it counts each island as its own separate entity. As you get towards the edge of the island, the item despawns, and actually I think it goes back to its point of origin. I can't prove it. I don't think my... Hey, hey, you come back over here. I think that's how it works. However, that wouldn't explain exactly why. Here, you two, come over here. You two, you coconuts. Anyways, let's go ahead and grab these. We'll drink those guys. We'll drink those guys. There it is. I would actually personally be saving the coconuts. If you pop a hole in one end, now that we have duct tape, you would actually be able to secure them fairly well with clean water. Once you had a boiling water, like once you could boil water, you could make it work. How you would boil, actually, that's something I'm inexperienced with. I'm not really sure how you would boil the salt out of salt water. In fact, I would think you would have to make some kind of solar still. So if you don't know what a solar still is, because we have duct tape, I will explain to you what a solar still is. If you have a tarp or two tarps or duct tape, any of it will work. What you can do is you dig a pit and you line it with a waterproof surface, whether it be the tarp or whether it be the duct tape. Once you have the pit and the lining, then what you want to do is you take another set of sticks, you put it along the outside of the pit, and you put the, a tarp across the top now. And with the tarp across the top, what you want to do is you want to build a mound in the center of the ditch in the bottom of sand that you can sit like a can or something else in the middle of. And then what you do is you put a you put a rock in the middle of the tarp on top so that it bends downwards. And if it leans d low enough towards the ground, what will happen is if you fill this pit with salt water down here, it will evaporate. And as the evaporated water goes up, it will catch on the tarp and create droplets. And because you put the rock in the center of the top of the tarp, it will then draw the water towards the center, which will then drip down into the can as fresh water. And there you go. You'll have the thing that you need in order to keep your life cooking along on an island over the long term. And that's a sustainable resource right there. Now, it's a very, very long and slow process. So typically, I'd recommend you make four or five of them. And it's going to be an energy intensive, like digging. That uses a lot of calories up. Digging uses a ton of calories up that you may not be able to replenish. And so things to think about along the way still... 
you don't have a choice, you don't have a choice. Let's get to work maybe building ourselves. I'd like this to be a building episode, I think. And so what I'm going to try and do is maybe we'll put like a couple more. I'd like to make several like separate storage units. So for example, this right here would be for food. It would be up off the ground so that the crabs couldn't get into it. And then what you would want to do is you would want to build yourself some stairs. And so let me go ahead and I'm going to get the wiki open right now for Stranded Dead. And I'm going to try and make some stairs here. I'm st Stranded Dead. Stranded Deep. Stranded Dead is going to be the DLC they release to add zombies once people get bored with the game. Yeah, do I know my, do I know my early access games or what? They'll be like, well, sales have kind of fell off. Maybe we should make a zombie expansion. Like, people don't have to play with it if they don't want it. But it'll keep the people that are interested doing it. So it takes a foundation... Five sticks and six lashings in order to do this. And so I think we might have to have the foundation like already up here. I don't know. This might be a little bit weird. Uh, sometimes the objects have to be like on top of the other object that they're making use of before they'll function properly. But let me grab some lashings. I know that there's a bunch of them laying around here. There we go. This might actually be all the lashings we have left. So yeah, six lashings here. Please don't fall off the side. I would love it if you would not fall off the side right now. Thank you. And so our lashings did not fall off the side. We are bleeding profusely because at the beginning of the episode, I, I recorded the footage, but I didn't catch it in time to commentate it. But yeah, we got attacked by a shark, and unfortunately, it was not so great for us. I suppose I could make this a two wide if I wanted more room to work with here. Just make it like a two wide, and then we get... This is going to store our food, basically. So any type of food storage you have, you want it to be up and off the ground so that, like, random ants and critters can't get into it. It won't keep the rats out. I mean, islands are known for their rat populations, so... Uh, there's only so much you can do in some of these situations. But at the same time, you do the best you can with what you have. I mean, it is what it is. So in this case, my goal would be to build ourselves... Let me move the... I'm going to move the lamp over here real fast. It doesn't have a genie in it, but damn, does it do a great job of illuminating. So anyways, we'll bring it over here. And in lieu of having wishes, I guess I'll just take, you know, spare photons as a fill-in. There we go. So let me drop it on the ground there so it's illuminating our workspace a little bit better so that I can see. And my dad's favorite phrase when I was growing up, I see, said the blind man as he picked up the hammer and saw. It's a fun one right there. Who wrote it? I don't know, but it's clever. I like it. So we've got a hammer. There's the steps. And so let's just make the steps right now. And I think the steps will probably be on this side here. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's put the steps on this side. And the steps will go right there. And then what we need are supports. So let's get the supports going. I don't know if I want to make this too long. I might make this too long. I mean, we've got a lot of sticks, but I can go out and farm some more in between episodes. I think this is going to be the last one that I record for the day anyways. So I can go farm them in between episodes. It's not a big deal to me. It doesn't break my heart having to go and find some more bits and pieces to make our lives a little bit easier but for right now I just want a room that'll store our food and keep it separate from our common area because it appears to me as though we've gone through a lot of our free space very very quickly I'm also gonna take these here and let me refill that real fast I think it's probably a good idea actually no we're full up right now we don't need to cook food or anything of the sort I tried to swim the UPS box back from that other island but like I said I had saved in between and so it despawned when we crossed the biome edge so it is what it is. I'm probably going to grab one of these flashlights as well. Let me ditch these machetes. How many machetes do I have now? Three? Oh, I have three machetes? Fantastic. I can count things. Maybe this will be a tool shed in here. Maybe that's what it'll be. Let me drop the engine over here with this other bits and pieces. That doesn't look like a full engine. That actually, it kind of just looks like... I don't know. It looks like something... Like that right there might be where the piston attaches. I'm not really sure. I, I'm not a mechanical guy. I'm really not. Which is sad because like half the people in my family are mechanics. And so it's embarrassing my lack of technical knowledge. However, when it comes to PCs and computers, I'm pretty good. I got an A plus and a network plus from back in the day. They've expired at this point. They don't count anymore. But, you know, I went through the effort to get them in the first place. It is just shocking how quickly you go through sticks in this game. Or is it just me? Like, you go through sticks so quickly so insanely quickly in this game like yeah we're already down to like 20 sticks and I thought that I had brought back a whole bunch of them with me too unfortunately any building construction project in this game tends to eat through them really fast you put up three or four walls and that's that Let me give him a flashlight here you can't loot while the flashlights turned on so I'm sorry for that we gotta loot in the dark here for a second but much past that I'll try and keep the flashlight lit up so that we can build some other stuff 
For now, we don't really need to put a roof on it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Get our hammer out here. And I actually think I have to stack these on the foundation for it to function. Or at least they have to, like, they count the foundation as part of the construction materials. And so you've just sort of got to have it. And so I think I can make this work. It's just kind of, we got to, there we go. We got to kind of, like, jimmy rig it here. Got a wall right there. Start throwing in walls real fast. We got enough for another wall right here, too. Whether or not we'll have enough for the wall and the roof remains to be seen, but we'll try it out. Hopefully we'll get it to work. I'm, I'm hoping, anyways. I've got my fingers crossed. Got my fingers crossed, my toes crossed, my dicks crossed. Oops! Don't have no, multiple dicks, maybe. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know if that would be a benefit or a minus. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure right there. Hmm. Not sure, not sure, not sure. It could be one or the other, depending. I guess it really, su I suppose it kind of like counts into how good you are and how coordinated you are, your hand-eye coordination or something. Now we've got those there, we should be able to build a wall out of them right here, I hope. I think the fronds might be in the way though, which is super disappointing. Yeah, the fronds are in the way. Okay, so let me... I'm gonna deconstruct it, we'll try again and hopefully this time, nope, that didn't get it either. There we go, that got them all out of the way, although I'm gonna have to run around and like find all of the stuff now that's flown all over the place so that it doesn't go to waste. There we go. Grab all this stuff up off the ground. Is that going to leave us with enough to work with? The answer remains as maybe. So this will be like our tool shed, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I want to make this the coconut shed or the tool shed. I'm not really... I haven't really decided yet. I do like to keep things organized, though. I am a fan of organization and like things being where they go. So obviously I would like to have storage solutions here. I think that since it's next to the campfire, we might consider it as part of our food supply. And so what I may do is grab the spear and we may go out spear fishing and see if maybe we can just like stack things up. It's unfortunate that you go through wood so quickly in this game. It really is a disappointment. I guess you could go through and like, I used up the remainder of our sticks by, way to, by the way to stoke the fire there. So that's gonna be it, our stick supply is gone. I guess I'll keep the coconuts in here. I'll probably use this. I don't know. Let's grab the spear real fast. We'll try and go out. I don't know if it's going to be bright enough. What I prefer to do is if the moon is hanging low right now. Oh, the moon's not hanging low just yet. Well, let me make a cut here. Actually, we could hunt a shark, I guess. Our health looking okay? Our health is looking pretty good. Yeah, let's go after that. Let's get after a shark hunt here. Let me find something good to fight the shark with. And I think... If we've got a machete, will work. That one's a little bit busted. I don't want to use our good axe to do it, though. Let's go ahead and we'll get on out here and we'll see if we can find this little guy. Building a raft might make it easier. I say little guy. That's a term that I use very, very loosely. But, you know, if we can find the little guy, it'll make our lives a little bit easier. There's one right there. There's one right there. So if we can get out here, I'm going to bleed a little bit in the water to sort of draw him in. If we just hang out right here, he should come a-knocking pretty soon. And then once we've got daylight, after we've drawn him in, we should be able to get him. If you guys want to know how to make a turtle trap, actually, I can teach you how to make a turtle trap right now. If you want to make a turtle trap, if you're in a tropical environment, it can be reasonably assumed, especially if you're in a bayou. If you're in a bio, you're in a bayou, whatever you want to call it, depending on where you are geographically. If you're in a swamp, if you're in a bayou, if you're near ponds, if you're in a tropical environment, in all of these locations, turtles tend to accumulate. And turtles actually have a lot of meat on them. It's one of those things that most people don't think about. And so let me find a suitable place where you can make a tutor. Like a, a turtle trap would be good. You've got to have the right geography for it if you're wondering what I'm looking for. So let me see if I can find so that I can display this a little bit better for a turtle trap here. Let me see. Alright, so if you're trying to make a turtle trap. Oh, it looks like our friend came in to visit. I think. Where did he go? I think he dove under. There he is right there. We'll wait till the sun comes up. I don't relish the thought of like fighting. I don't relish the thought of fighting a shark in the dark. Well, it doesn't look like this island has one, but what you want. Let me get a flashlight too so I can display this a little bit better. We won't need it that much, but honestly, for discussion purposes, it's probably good to illuminate. We don't need shark music when we're on land. I feel like they should remove it if you're on land just because, eh, who cares? Sharks can't. Oh, wow, he's right up on the edge of the island. He's a big boy too. All right. Well, for discussion purposes, what you're looking for is something sort of like this over here. But realistically, you would want it to come in a little bit further. So if you look at this land right here, why is there coconut laying in the middle of the ground? 
Who knows anymore? This island's turned into a giant garbage heap. You're looking for something like this, where it's enclosed on both ends. It can be a sandbar on both ends, or it can be rocks just like this. And you want it actually to cut in a little bit tighter with a bit more water. And in that situation, what you're going to do, he said, as he looked behind him for sharks, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take sticks like pungies, and you're going to stack them up, so pointing up in the air like a little fence going around this. And then you're going to leave a small hole in it right there. Not like a big hole, but like a small kind of hand width hole maybe between the sticks. And once you've got that, you want to make this. You want to make sure the sticks are in there real good. You don't want them to move. So if you like push them with your hand, you don't really want them to give away too much. And then what you want to do is you just kind of like hang out over here with a fire source. And you're going to load bait into the water. So let's say that you caught a fish or something or you have like small lizards or whatever. You want to cut them up and leave them in the water right here. Turtles are scavengers and so they'll come in and try and get them. And what they'll do is they'll push their way past the sticks. You want the sticks, I forgot to put this, you want them to be inclined, pointing towards land. And so what will happen is the turtle will climb up over the sticks, and then when you come from this way with your fire source, it'll freeze for a second, and if it tries to run away, it won't be able to get back up over the inclined sticks. You know how fences have those, those bars of the barbed wire that actually sticks out backwards so that somebody can't climb up over the fence properly? It's the exact same concept, but with a turtle. And turtles actually have a lot of meat on them. Like, seriously, turtles have a lot of meat on them. You can get a pretty good food source from turtles and then on the plus side you can also use the shell if you cut the shell in half you can use it as a water holder it's it's not an amazing water holder but it's it'll work kind of I mean it's definitely makeshift but it's still a useful item that you can keep around just in case it's a utility item I mean you know that rain catch that I was talking about you could use coconut halves for that you could use a turtle shell for that I mean and you just have to swap them out keep an eye on it before they start overflowing each day especially if the area gets a lot of rainfall like it's like a tropical area like Guam or wherever else. Apparently I didn't drink out of this coconut before I threw it in the ocean. Shame on me. Shame on me for not using everything at hand. That's one of the most commonly quoted things in survival books is they'll be like, survivalism is not like staying alive. Survivalism is knowing how to use what you have and that's very, very true. Like that's a big, big aspect of being able to survive in a situation is not panicking and just knowing what you have and what you can turn what you have into. I mean, the turtle trap right there, everything has sticks on it. You can find sticks just about anywhere. Oh, look, it's allowing me to cut it now that it's out in the water. Huh. All right, well, that works for me, I guess. We'll throw that over there for right now. Let's go find ourselves a shark. We're going to go on a shark hunt today. I'm going to say, Atchy Beast, we aim our steely barbs with which to drag you deep below and then back to shore to sustain our lust, our hunger, our lust for meat. All right, there he is right there. Let's get on him. That's a great white, though, so this might be a little bit more precarious of a hunt. Hopefully we don't get ourselves killed. Oh, he's coming right for us. All right, great white. You got nothing to show me right now that I ain't already seen before. So you know what that means for you. Yeah, I see your mouth open. That means he's in attack mode. Watch out for the front end on this one. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have a wheel. Uh, they don't seem to have a real good wheel radius or a real good fin radius. They have trouble coming up to attack, but if they get you, they're going to get you good. Keep that in mind. Yeah, there's another one right there, and so actually... We've got ourselves into a bit of a predicament now. What you want to do in this case is swim backwards because they're actually programmed. They don't try and come at you dead away if they know that you've seen them. Oh, he almost got us right there. That was almost it. That was almost it. We almost got ourselves gnawed upon. Num, 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 num. I'm a big Perry Grip fan, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. I think that Perry Grip makes the best music on the internet. Actually, just about everybody from They Might Be Giants makes, like, incredible... I think they've written, like, more jingles and everything else than, like, any other group. And once they broke up, you have Jonathan Colton. You have Perry Grip. There's a bunch of them still making music, and they put it on the internet all the time. I think these guys are grounded for right now. So we might be able to get in here and take them out with... They have trouble maneuvering near the shore. Oh, he got us. Okay, so there it is. He got us. It's all right, though. Oh, he despawned. Shit, well, all that effort went to nothing then. It's a little bit disappointing. How hurt are we right now? Pretty hurt, actually. Pretty hurt. Oh, wow, they're coming in from all over the place. Okay, never mind. See, I've been trying to clear the sharks out of our island, but I haven't been able to decide exactly how they spawn just yet. Like, that's one of the funny things about it is that... We should regenerate pretty quickly, by the way, in case you're wondering. It shouldn't be a big deal. Let's hang out here for a second. Unfortunately, they're spawning faster than we can take them out. They seem to have themselves a lovely little, I don't know, cage around here somewhere for Minecraft references that's popping them out left and right. Either that or their breeding rate has gone up. They're like sea rabbits at this point. No, I don't want that. 
I need that in my hand right now. Alright, let's get in here. Take a couple chops at this guy. We should be regenerating anyway, so who cares? We just gotta keep him from wheeling around and hitting us. It might be because we're killing him too close to shore. They sink kind of weirdly, I don't know. You'll see what I mean in just a second. We'll see if this one despawns. It might just be the Great Whites. You might not be able to bring them back with you. Ooh, he's going out to sea. He's done. Yeah, I'm not going to fall for that one again. I'd rather wait if I can. There we go. Looks like he's wheeled around slightly. Unless that's a Great White. That's a Great White. That might be the one that we were messing with earlier. I don't know. We killed one, and then the other one we got a couple hacks in on him, but I don't know if that's going to work to our favor here. Go down, come on. Let me have your body so that I might shove it inside my mouth orifice. How's that sound to you, shark? Yeah, you done went into your weak place right now. You're beached. You're done. I'm walking on your back right now while I'm killing you. Like, how do you feel right now, Apex Predator? How do you feel? Yeah, your mommy's gonna be mad at you. She taught you better than that, shark. Yeah, it looks like the Great Whites despawn. And also, our machete appears to have broken. It might be a better plan just to use stone axes for this because we have the renewable resources to do it whereas machetes stay like long purpose useful. The other machete had no durability left so I'm not that worried about losing it but I don't know why our character's not sprinting right now by the way. I feel like he should be though. Where is our stone axe at? A crude axe? That's got enough left in it. That's got some oomph left. If you're trying to kill sharks, the axe is the way to go. Like seriously, it's the most overpowered weapon ever for shark killing. For everything else though, it, it takes a little while. It takes a little while. I'm trying to make proper, or proper use of the daylight right now. Not proper use of the daylight. Proper use of the daylight would be using it to make like turnip stew or something like that. Like, yes me lord? Of course sir. We fought with a shark right now lord. What you want me to do with that shark over there? Want me to hit him with his axe? Yeah? Like, mm-hmm, I want you to hit him with that axe, yeah? All right, then. Let's go fight me a shark. Hooray! We killed the shark, sir! Please don't let me get eaten. He's got him big teeth, right? Let's see here. I think that's a great white right there. I don't think... We need a tiger shark. I want to eat... Oh, there's a marlin. See that marlin right there? There's a marlin. I like marlins a lot, although... Eh, another great white. Yeah, and he's coming at us. He's coming at us. I'd like to get that marlin, but unfortunately, we just aren't that lucky. I don't know if you can spear the marlin or what you can do with him, but either way... I saw him for a second there. I know that you all saw him, too. I know you can catch marlins in this game. I've seen other people do it, but I think they despawn because the developers haven't put in their death animation or anything yet. I think they despawn, as I recall. Either way, let's go catch ourselves some fish real fast. Some crabs, some fish, whatever. Doesn't really matter to me. There we go. I wish you could actually put out your fire once, like, to keep the twigs from all burning up. I'm going to try and actually get us a good food source right now for the long term. There's another one right there. Another one right there. There's some big ones out here, actually. A lot of big ones. I wonder if they grow over time if you don't catch them. I wonder what the secret is to that. I don't know. Another way, if you're trying to catch a bunch of crabs, I mean, if you have the means to make yourself a crab net, I'm assuming since we have a, a bunch of lashings right now, a crab net is very, very simple to make. All you do is you take sticks like this. Well, those are a little bit big, but anyways, what you're going to do is you take four smaller sticks, large enough to where they can withstand kind of like weight being placed in them. You're going to notch them, and so that could be a little bit difficult if you don't have a knife. And so you're going to make small notches out here, and then you're going to whittle notches that just barely fit, and using the hammer, you're going to hammer them in. It's not going to last forever. Are you, are you really that brave right now, Crab? All right, well, anyways, what you can do in this situation is, let's say that you caught yourself a fish. How nice would it be to turn that fish into, like, ten more crabs? Like, you can turn that fish into a ton of crab, right? And using the interlocking mechanism that I've just told you with notches, you can fix these together to make a square frame. And what you can do is, I guess you could whittle holes in on each side. It's going to be time-consuming to make a sh to make yourself a crab net, but I've used the, I've metal I've used metal versions of these in real life, and it's not going to be super effective. You're going to have to leave the line pretty slack in the middle, so you'd want to essentially just over under yourself a net in the middle that would be kind of loose. I this is one of those things that I would have to fiddle with because I've never done it before. I'm telling you how I would personally do it if I had to. It'd be time-consuming first and foremost. So this is going to be a long-term solution. If you're stuck on the island. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal if you think you're going to be rescued in two or three days. Just keep yourself alive for a couple days. But if it's been a week or two and you still haven't been picked up and you're starting to wonder, I mean, this is kind of wishful thinking, but you make the frame, you notch the holes in it, and then from there you would over-under yourself a net. And you want, to leave, you want it to leave real loose so that it comes down into kind of like an ellipse. 
when it goes down, when you put weight on it, you want the, the net to be small enough to where it captures everything. The holes are small enough to where nothing can sneak through it, but at the same time, the holes are still, you know, firm enough to where they hold. It's, it's kind of, it's sketchy. It's sketchy. Making a crab net would take me some work. I'd have to figure it out slightly. But it could be done. And basically, it's just a frame with rope in the middle weaving back and forth so that it, like, when you put weight on it, essentially what you want to do is you would hold it on both sides. And you would just sweep it through the water out here. And occasionally you might catch yourself something if it's a little bit larger. If you wanted it to be a bona fide crab net, what you would then do is with the frames, you would then put another hole on the corners with a rope that like tied together at the top, kind of from each corner to the center, so that it had kind of like a rope scaffold above it. You can make yourself a gaffing stick with it if you're real creative, but I don't know how that would work. That would require some metal, maybe. I don't know. I think this is getting out of hand. Maybe actually what I would do is I would take the handle off the lantern right here and then affix it to the rope on the top. And then what you do is you just take a stick and you can grab it up out of the water. You would sit it out in the water like maybe this deep out here. I mean, that's how we used to do it when we go crabbing. And the handle might stick up out of the water. Or, honestly, if you're real still, you could stand in the water with the gaffing stick already. I'm pointing with my hand. The gaffing stick already inside the handle of the lantern right here. And then I don't know how sturdy that lantern is. If it's metal, it would work. If it's not metal, it wouldn't work. It would break, but... You put some meat in the middle. Crabs are scavengers, and they might crawl up in there. And once you get five or six of them, you could jerk the net out. Hopefully get a hold of them, or maybe just spear them once they're in the net. But that kind of precludes you from using the net. I don't know. This kind of got out of hand. This became an invention. I'm just kind of like talking about things that I would fiddle with in my free time if I was trying to survive. Crab net might work, though. Some kind of net, anyways. I don't know. It would help if you were good at weaving it, but... Honestly, spear fishing would work too. It's just that spear we spear fishing is kind of tough because the refraction of the water represents the animals as being like further off to the left or right than they actually are, and so it takes a practiced eye in order to be spear fishing successfully. I don't know. Technically, my guess would be that you might be able to leave some rotten food out on the beach, and crabs will come up out of the water to get it. That might work. I mean, if you know there's crabs around, that might just be an all-purpose easier solution to do it than. Wasting your time and resources and energy making a crab net, but yeah, we used to crab a lot when I was a kid, and a crab net is basically just a frame with netting in the middle of it, and then you just sit it out in the water with bait in the middle of it. You have to, you have to, you have to tie the bait down, otherwise the crabs will walk off with it, so you have to weave the bait into the rope, but anyways, the bait will walk off with it if you don't, but on the plus side, I've picked up 15, 20, 25 crabs in one go with one net pull before. I mean, it happens, so you never know. Just my two cents. I don't know if it would work, but be something to fiddle with in your twilight hours if you got a lot of time to kill rather than sitting here and being miserable about being alone you got to keep your mind occupied and that'd be something i'd fiddle with my name is splattercat i will see you all later it, it's really really enjoyable hanging out with all of you and just kind of like talking about stranded deep and different things as we go across the game we built ourselves a little garage out here where we can stock up some of our food we've built ourselves you know a fire up so that we can cook things in the future we've got enough coconuts to last a while i figure we'll get back to diving down into shipwrecks in the future I will see you all there. Hi, do, everybody. We still haven't found that magical band-aid, but we will. Hang with me. We'll find it. Eventually, we will find ourselves that band-aid. I promise. I'll see you all later. Hi, do, everybody.